Should you still invest in YSG in 2023, knowing that there are many Archer Commanders that are out there that you can actually invest on that are actually better than YSG? That is the biggest question that we have in 2023. Is he still worth it? Is this legendary Archer Commander still worth working on in the very early stages of the game? We're going to be reviewing YSG and his other counterpart, which is Zhuge Liang. As you can see, this is Zhuge Liang. This is Korean versus Chinese, basically. <laughs> now, they are both AOE heroes in here. But first, we're going to review YSG and why he is one of the greatest of all time Commander in Rise of Kingdoms. My name is Shinchi42. If you guys like Rise of Kingdoms content, consider subscribing and turn your notifications. Now, many of you guys have probably worked on YSG and many of the OG players have YSG, but the new players that are coming in into the game, what do we suggest to them? What advice do we really give to them? Knowing what we know now, knowing that we're going to see so many very, very good commanders within the game. Now, YSG to me is still one of the best commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. He has great utility from the beginning of your gaming, even until now in this late season. I personally still use YSG. Let's take a quick look on YSG's skill here. YSG has the ability, when this is expertise, he has the ability to do a circular shape area AOE, which is something that we love. In the early stages of the game, you can use YSG into defending structures because a lot of the players in the early stages of the game, when they are brand new, they don't understand how to stay away from the circle shape area. And how many have you slain with YSG skill if you're an OG player, right? Damage is up to five enemy troops in a circle shape area with a huge damage factor of 1700. Then damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target. So keep that in mind. Now, not that only you can use YSG in defending your structure or defending your city whenever people are swarming you. Another option that you can do with YSG is using it in the open field and this is where he really really shines with ysg and this is where ysg really really shines in the open field because a lot of times that you're going to be fighting in the open field it is going to be murder balls clash big and there's everybody out there that is trying to swarm you and then when you attack when you cast that rage skill you are going to deal damage to multiple targets and not just one that is the biggest takeaway with ysg now, YSG's second skill here, normal attack from this commander have 10% chance to grant 100 extra rage, allowing you to cast this first skill much quicker. Now, it will also increase the attack of the archer units by 100% for the next three seconds. That's huge. Now, this is the third skill of YSG. This is going to be for whenever you are garrisoning a city, defending a structure. This is where the benefit of this is going to be applicable. Now, fourth skill of YSG is the ability to increase and enhance the skill damage bonus. Not just for the primary commander, but also with the secondary commander. This is the biggest capability of YSG, making that active rage skill stronger. Now, once you're able to max this all out, then you'll have expertise and which allows you to make it a circular shape area. So if you don't have an expertise, it will be just be a fan shape area. It's still good, but you really want expertise YSG. So if you're starting out and playing the game, what I would recommend is just do a five, five, one, one, and slowly work into YSG to max him out. So YSG is, I think to me is still a wonderful, commander in the game i personally still use this and this is an early stage commander so by the time that you get to see his counterpart in here which is a really really strong commander as well which is juga liang i i love juga liang i think if if juga liang comes out in the very early stages of the game let's say juga liang is a season one commander i might skip ysg I will go straight to Juga Liang instead. But since YSG is a season one commander, you have an early access to YSG. You can have great utility for him. And by the time that you see Juga Liang, you should have enough sculptures or gems to get Juga Liang and max Juga Liang. 
Now, let's take a quick look and review Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang is an archer, versatile, and skill commander. Unlike YSG, YSG has garrison, which one of the skills is basically useless in the field. So basically, I want to tell you guys right now is this is Korea versus China. And I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They're, they're both really amazing um heroes in here or commanders all right so let's take a look into the first skill this is something that is so good with Zhuge Liang because this first skill as you can see deals direct damage up to five nearby enemy troops it is a circular aoe already circle shape area already unlike ysg on uh, you know if you don't expertise ysg it is only a fan shape on ysg so Zhuge Liang already you know, has an edge because just working on this first skill, you already get the expertise version of YSG. So this one has a huge damage factor of 2000 in comparison to YSG 1700, right? As you can see here, in addition, all targets deal 15% less damage for the next three seconds. So it has a debuff to the targets that you hit five of them. So, so far what we can see, Zhuge Liang is not only a high DPS commander, but also is playing a support role as well in the field. That is so good, right? All right, so the second skill in here, Archer units led by this commander gains 30% increased health and deal 5% extra damage. That is passive, all right? Now, there's a condition in here. Whenever the troop is inflicted with a control effect like silence disarm and heal immune now guan yu for example has the silence while you're in the map not on the resource node okay you have to be in the map and what's going to happen here is that you have a 50 percent chance to negate the effect and deal a damage in here with a damage factor of 500 to the attacking troop this can trigger once every five seconds you see you're getting really really good skills from Zhuge Liang. You're getting that passive skill already, and then you're getting a conditional skill as well in one skill in here. You have a 50% chance to negate, meaning it won't take effect, which is really awesome. Very, very strong. So much better than YSG. If YSG used to be an S class, like in the early season, when it goes down here and you meet Zhuge Liang, YSG goes down to A class or maybe even B because how awesome Zhuge Liang is. Third skill, if this commander's troop contains only archer units, it will now deal 20% extra skill damage. Now, we've seen with YSG, right, that there is a, you know, skill damage enhancement in here, 50% skill damage bonus. So, the best part about YSG is that you can actually use YSG with other commanders. You can, you know, play with it with other unit types as well. But Zhuge Liang will be more strict towards two uh, archers in here. So you can see in here, it has to only contain archer units and deals extra 20% skill damage. Now, the normal attack from this commander's troop has a 10% chance to increase the attack of their archer units by 50%. That's huge, man. 50% is a lot for three seconds. And only, you know, the trigger rate in here is like every five seconds. That's That's really not that bad. Every five turns. Now, the fourth skill, whenever this commander uses an active skill, so whenever you use this active skill in here, now your troops will gain Marquis effect. This effect cannot be dispelled by other troops. It increases the damage dealt by 10% for 10 seconds. So if their troop contains only archer unit and it has Marquis effect, whenever this commander uses an active skill, they will consume the Marquis effect, deal direct damage up to three nearby enemy troops of the damage factor of 1500. More damage is in here. We're seeing a lot more damage now in comparison to YSG. Direct damage dealt through this method is not affected by buff to skill damage. All right. So that's a key importance over there. Now, how do you get this Marquis effect so you have to expertise Zhuge Liang so Zhuge Liang is you know it's a must to expertise upon entering battle this commander troop gained Marquis effect again this effect cannot be dispelled by other troops remember that so whenever you have this Marquis effect you will then gain that 10% increased damage for 15 seconds so whenever we read over here right this effect will increase damage dealt by 10% and cannot be dispelled by other troops. So like Guan Yu cannot dispel this. Now, each time they're burning Xin Ye or Marquis Zhongwu skills deal skill damage, this troops 
this commander's troops immediately gain 30 rage. So whenever you cast this damage in here or you cast this damage in here you are then already gaining extra rage in here 30 right away so just by looking into this Zhuge Liang is definitely far more superior than YSG definitely this is what pros will be using right when you go into the later stages of the season especially as an archer gang now one thing that I want to mention in here is that um you can do some pairings with YSG and Zhuge Liang together. I would say you might want to do a Zhuge Liang first and then YSG secondary. You can do that option. And there's really so many options that you can do with Zhuge Liang and um, YSG. You know, I would, I, I'm going to show you my, my setup in here, all right? I'm, I'm going to send these guys back and, and let me show you what my setup is when I'm going to be uh, fighting in here. Now, I don't have all the archers in here. So when we look into my legendary archers, um, we do not have Dido and we don't have Tutmos. We didn't work on Gilgamesh, but everything I have in here. So let me show you my, my best archer march currently because I still technically use YSG. And I, and I think YSG is just an ultimate GOAT. Like, YSG, out of all the commanders within the game, YSG is probably one of the commanders that everybody should technically have in their uh, account. And, you know, it is something that you can definitely use in the late stages of the game. Because mainly is from his versatility. I mean, like, let's say you're not even an archer player. You can even put YSG with anyone that you pretty much have. That That is what makes YSG so great within Rise of Kingdoms, you know? All right, so I've got my marches back in here. So let me show you the setup that I have, all right? And let's do multi-select in here. All right, so you can see that we have on blue over here. All right, oh, actually... See, this is the thing I struggle a little bit whenever I try to do the multi-select. All right, so this is my setup. I got Burika and Zhuge Liang, and then we got Nebu and YSG, and then we got um, Henry and then Cyrus in here. This is my setup right now when I go fight. As you can see, I still love YSG in here. There's also other archers in here that you can use, like Artemisia. You can use Emanator, say you're garrisoning. You can utilize YSG still within this game, and I don't think people should skip on YSG. So my final recommendation in here is that people should still be investing into YSG. Get YSG because YSG will still have some utility in the late stages of the game. I don't think YSG will be ever be gone to the usage because he is still great. But maybe eventually, once there's a lot more commanders within the game, later stages of the game, especially if you're a whale, maybe YSG becomes less of a priority. But for free-to-play low spender, this is a great value commander when, within Rise of Kingdoms. And I think everyone should technically have YSG. At some point or the other, you will use YSG longer than many of the commanders that you are going to be seeing within the game. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you think about it. I'll see you again next time.